Greetings, Sentinels fans. We're ready for another exciting Sentinel Tactics tournament. Here we are at the Game Store Game Night here in St. Louis, and this is where we're hosting our summer <laughs> Sentinel Tactics tournament here in summer 2015. With me, I have my co-commentator, Matt Bender. Hello. And he's going to be helping us out as we go through all these exciting matches. Uh, we've got a, an interesting lineup today. We only have four teams at this tournament, which means instead of the standard bracket tournaments that we've been doing at previous uh, conventions and tournaments, we're going to be using a round robin. So everybody's going to be facing everyone. It's going to be pretty exciting. Um, we're about ready to get started here. So let's take a quick look at the map, and then we'll look at the brackets, and then we will move right on with the tournament. So you can see here on the map that the map is a city area. You've got um, a bit of cover there, kind of in the middle of the map. And uh, there's mountains along the outside edges. Um, and there's kind of a street running right through the middle. I think it's going to provide some interesting challenges. Yeah, definitely. I think there's a, there's a, there's a very good chance that uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we see some things from maybe Ambuscade and Absolute Zero using um, their ability to kind of cut down the mobility of, of people and certain uh, maybe cut down the mobility down through those thoroughfares that cut cut the map into pieces. Um, yeah. But I really do think that, I'm, I'm really hoping that we uh, see some visionary play, which we haven't really seen much in the uh, North American circuits uh, at, at all. We were, you were talking to me uh, earlier that in Australia, we've yeah. seen a lot of visionary, a lot more, but not really in North America. But now with this map, I think this is the chance for teams to break out visionary because... Because uh, the mobility, mobility will yeah. be really be a big factor in this tournament. I, I think, think that's absolutely true. I mean, with the, with the busy cityscape, is going to make a big difference. And, and like you're saying, yeah, the Australia circuit, there's been a lot of visionary play and a lot of visionary getting banned right off the bat, which means that she's a threat. She's a player. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to see. I know that at this tournament we have uh, at least one team that we've seen here before and some more experienced players. So I'm looking forward to some interesting matches. Mm -hmm. That said, the first match on the table. Uh, if we were to pull the brackets up, we can see how those are going to go. The first match is um, well. So you, you can see our four teams. We've got the adapt subroutines, the Gate Crashers, the Propaniacs, and Electric Mayhem. Um, and the, the first uh, match on the main casted table will be the Adaptive Subroutines against the Gate Crashers. Mm -hmm. And if you've been watching these tournaments since the beginning, you'll remember the Gate Crashers from the very first tournament we had. They had a great showing and ended up being one of the finalists mm -hmm. uh, at mm -hmm. that tournament. So um, I'm look, looking forward to seeing how that goes. So with that said, I think they're about ready on the table to go ahead and start in with the match. So let's go see how they're doing. Looks they're all standing around oh, here. We go. We've got Paul, he's ready to do his coin toss, so with all that said, he does the coin toss, and oh, there we go. Um, first draft, first play. First draft, first play. All right, so you guys get first ban, enter the position. So what character would you like to ban? Now, it's interesting. This, that's the team that's talking there. That is the adaptive subroutine. Uh, oh, they're, they're oh, banning Baron Blade fascinating. right off the bat. That's a character with not, with, without mobility. They're banning him early on. We've well, seen he's very play. strong. We've, yeah, he's, no. we've seen him uh, played a lot in previous tournaments. Uh, yeah. no. um, Ban um, Legacy. Legacy. They're banning Legacy. Sorry, Legacy. Yeah. Baron Blade and now they get first. And, then you get first pick. and they're going to pick Citizen Dawn. Oh, Bunker. 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 Oh, fantastic. We're going to see a lot of uh, grenade play, uh, hopefully. Dawn. Citizen Dawn over here mm -hmm. for the uh, uh, subroutines. Oh, operative. Wow. operative. That's exciting. I love it. Visionary. 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 Oh, very good. Yeah. Uh, this is going right quickly along here. I love Tachyon. it. Yeah, this is very good. Oh, and Tachyon. Interesting. Rah, 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 rah. Rah. These are some heavy hitters. This is a great lineup here. So we've got Citizen Don, who can be played either highly right, offensively or highly defensively. Mm -hmm. And we've got Ra, who's just pure Can't offense. Um, and then the Visionary has a lot of utility, but she's not going to be really do doing a lot in the way of damage herself. She can do some, but right. I expect Ryan to see her more focused on that. Right. Um, whereas there with the Gate Crashers, we've got Tachyon for speed, and we've got Bunker. I mean, Gate Crashers are pure offense. Tachyon <laughs> puts people down, Bunker puts people down, the Operator puts people down. Uh, definitely. Absolutely. Um, I think Bunker's going to be great because in this map, like you said, there's a lot of um, line of sight breaks due to elevation and there's a bit of cover. So Bunker's going to be able to, to lob those grenades all over the place. So mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think that's really interesting because we know that Citizen Dawn can be played kind of as uh, more support or more offense. But right. since they did pick that visionary, I'm assuming that they'll probably uh, go more offense with uh, Citizen Dawn. I certainly and see hope some, so. some big plays with that. That would yeah. be very exciting to see here. 
I think that's I think that's highly likely to be the case, mm -hmm. um, based on what we've seen from yes. this. So we haven't seen a lot anything. For, this is the adapter submarines. We, we haven't seen them in the tournament circuit yet. But I was talking to them this morning, and they have been watching all the matches and mm -hmm. getting all their stuff prepared. They had a bunch of insightful rules questions about how certain interactions mm -hmm. worked. So I am looking forward to seeing who goes where. Yeah, absolutely. And see those beautiful painted minis there. You guys chose over here. Correct? We can't yes. always play with at home, but of course at the tournaments we get to play with them. It's very exciting. <laughs> yeah, no, they're beautiful. All right. So yeah, you can see the giant pile of, of uh, citizens there that Don gets. Yeah, absolutely. If she's even going to use them, I've yeah. seen Citizen Don plays where she doesn't use the secondary citizen yeah. for her other power. So we'll see Definitely. what goes. Um, but if she does, I would be interested to see uh, some of the then, seasonal then um, d uh, autumn and oh, summer sure. yeah. and everything, because they do have the mobility, which might uh, end up helping them more on this map, which has a really big differences with mobility. Yeah. Um, I could see playing a Citizen Autumn and have her just be kind of a debuffer. Mm -hmm. But at this point, because we have Visionary, and Visionary's all utility. Yeah, that's true. Um, mm -hmm. I really would like to see it be just pure offense. So yeah. maybe Citizen Summer is the way to go there if you want one of the season ones. Right. Um, otherwise, I'd probably go either um, uh, Hack and Slash or uh, Hammer and Anvil. Ooh, definitely. So. We do have the, uh, if she ends up going with a Citizen route with more offensive, that would help with the Citizen Summer uh, because she's probably the most offensive um, of the ones that have mobility. I yeah, that's say. true. I would, um, I would say that. And interesting. And because they ha do have that visionary probably playing a little bit more of a supportive role, that would be an interesting route to go. So we will see what ends up happening here. Yeah. The fact that they pulled uh, Ra as their anchor means mm -hmm. that it's, uh, I'm, I have high hopes for seeing lots of dice at the table. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh. All right. So let's see. Oh, hell. There's no idea. You can roll the other one. Just use a white die. Uh, like the other white die seems... Well, this one's also chipped. Yeah, yeah, this one's also chipped. Here, they've just been playing so much. Yeah, People that's love really strange. So much. I wonder what happened to them. They look yeah, like all the movement die are chipped. Okay. Every huh. single one of them. Uh -huh. It might be a product of manufacturing. Interesting. Yeah, that's just where they came off the sprue, it looks like. Yeah. Well, then, I, since everyone else rolled with chipped yeah, movement, I, I feel like I need, to, <laughs> I need to also roll with chipped movement. Interesting. Okay. I really want to make an end audio in there too. You can turn it down and get my ear and make it really loud. Mm. Mm. Panic them. But, you know, <laughs> if you're bored. All right. <laughs> would you like health? I don't. No, I got health. Oh, I need help, yeah. That would be good. Right. It, it does. I'm going to play the game coming up from incapacitation. All right, so <laughs> looks like they're making their decisions here. They're picking some power cards. Pretty yeah. soon now we so should have information have about turn what... Turn order, turn order. Okay, you work in the turn order. Yeah. As okay, soon as everyone picks everything, then we'll... Still figuring out their turn order. Once yeah. they have their turn order decided, we'll be able to tell you some of their choices that they've made in terms of uh, powers and uh, things like that. But I think it'll be really interesting to see how they're going to play with Bunker, too, because Bunker can... Um, with this map that has a lot of line of sight issues, I would assume that you would have a lot of uh, grenades being used. Yeah, I'd love um, to see Bunker move if he has if he starts with a high movement. I'd love to see Bunker like get up on top of one of these buildings. Right, that's the other thing I was going to say. Maybe yeah. he could uh, use some kind of sniping. Maybe go into turt mode and just <laughs> yeah, kind of go. start sniping people off the top of uh, buildings. Right, uh, that'd be really interesting to see. Because that turret mode would give him access to all of his guns and uh, give him a reach, which is always helpful yep. in maps like this. Yeah, especially, I mean, he does have the cards that will like, extend his range. And so him being on top of a building, which w makes it so he has a longer range to things mm -hmm. because he has, has to account for that distance, is actually going to be helpful. And it looks right. like he did. they did pull an extra citizen, but which one is it? We had a, we had a shot for a second there. Um... Oh, and they pulled Citizen Truth, so oh, they are okay. going the defensive strategy. Interesting. There. Very, very interesting. I mean, that is the standard tournament right. mm -hmm. uh, Citizen Don play, is pull Citizen Truth for the sake of the defense. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. 
So I, I wonder, I know that's the customary thing that often happens with Citizen Dawn. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if we're going to see a lot more of a defensive play from them um, that we see sometimes in the tournaments. But okay. I think we probably will, based on the fact that they have two fairly squishy teammates. Mm -hmm. uh, both Ra and Visionary yeah. are, are way low on hit points. And so starting them out where, the, making it so that neither Ra nor Visionary has to worry about their defense. Mm -hmm. Ra has a minus one to defense. Right. Um, or rather, will have minus one to defense frequently <laughs> if he uses his Solar Flare card, mm -hmm. which he should. Right. And then Visionary, of course, is very squishy. And so Absolutely. saying, fine, we'll play with the heaviest defense um, strategy and combine it with uh, two. Uh, I mean, they're really putting all their chips into the raw basket at this point. Right, right, absolutely. Um, I can tell you some of the powers they uh, pulled at this point. So the visionary is starting with brain burn and mind spike. So it has, uh, she's, uh, I mean, those are her base powers, but she's pulling in uh, foresight. So foresight is going to be the one where you can uh, roll a die and you put it yeah. on the card and then switch it out for other people's powers, uh, other people's dice. And so she'll be affecting both her teammates' dice and her opponent's dice with that. Um, and then she's got decoy projections. That's giving her more defense. It's, right. fa it's interesting to me that she's using decoy projection okay. and Citizen Dawn is using Citizen Truth. This is a very defensive start from right. the adaptive subroutines. And I think they're, they're a little bit worried. I'm kind of getting the feeling that they're a little bit worried about how squishy their team is. And so really putting a lot of defensive, cautionary things up up yeah. front to make sure that they can stay alive long enough to get into a good position to kind of put the hurt on the other team. Yeah. Um, uh, Citizen Dawn, of course, has Return with the Dawn. That's how she has Citizen Truth out. But her other power that she has right now is Devastating Aurora, which is the one that incapacitates all of her opponents in a certain area, uh, but it doesn't count for victory points. So I, hope, I think that she's planning on using that just to set back their powers and make them build yeah. up again. But uh, it's an interesting out-of-the-gate strategy. I don't Definitely. mind it. And then Ra's using Flame Spike, so he gets to take, make extra attacks and Living Pyre, so he's making auto, he's uh, making um, uh, hazard spaces around him, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know, it's interesting, I'll, I'll, we'll see what happens. And with the Citizen Dawn play, if I'm not mistaken, the Devastating Aura does, um, it doesn't in have to do anything with line of sight, does it? Uh, no, it's just a certain area. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, here we can pull that card up and talk about it. Uh, the Devastating Aurora card uh, it incapacitates each uh, enemy character in radius 4, so it doesn't have to have line of sight or anything. And then, additionally, on pa passing incapacitation, it also pushes them. Right. And so, sure, you'll be able to knock a bunch of people out, move them all around the board, and then they have to build back up again. But it does, I mean, it doesn't give you points, and if somebody had a couple of points of damage on them and you incapacitate them, they come back up at full health and you didn't Definitely. get any points out of it. Definitely. There's a strategy to be done there, there mm -hmm. but the fact that they started with it, I hope, means that they have a specific plan. Right, absolutely. So. Uh, and Citizen Dawn is, is the anchor of their team. She is the one that's going last, so um, the other team, uh, meanwhile, Gate Crashers is starting with Operative, then Tachyon, and then Bunker. And it looks like they're about ready to go. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Yeah, the Operative is a little far away from her teammates, or from her opponents, because she's all, all the way over there by the mountains. So, we'll see where she goes. Two, four, six, sprint. Yeah. Oh, right here. That works. Yep. <laughs> so you're going to move and then sprint? Yeah. One, right. two, three, four, five, six. It looks like operative right. is right. She's, yeah, headed towards that cover in the middle, that kind of um, parker. Who's printing dodge? Park right, of so trees she, in the middle of the city oh. there. <laughs> and so she moved as far as she could. She sprinted for the extra action and she dodged for her last last action. So she took her whole turn moving over there and then getting defensive. So she wants to get into position. Yeah, absolutely. Is that a three? You're on a one right now. I'm talking about three. And three, yeah. I'm going to sprint. Okay. And then I will aim. Sprint and then aim. All right. All right. So she's aiming. Okay. Sprint. Sprint. Okay. Go offensive right off the bat. Yep. All right. And the, I'm, Sprint and aim, and I'm your, interested that Rob picked up All right, great. an aim. Yeah. I'm uncertain as to why Rob picked up an aim. Yeah. Since that'll just, yeah. that'll just disappear yeah. at the yeah. start of his next yeah. turn. Yeah. It will. It will yeah. disappear. I think we just want to learn that they all do. So they all do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so they all do. Yeah. Yeah. It's all the same. Yeah. Well, we'll get it. Get it. Get it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I didn't inspect but the, I, the, blue the adaptive yet, uh, uh, subroutines are definitely out. playing an, an offensive game because they have all these offensive characters. Um, uh, pardon me. The uh, gate crashers. Right. So. We're seeing the operative moving up. I'm sure we'll be seeing Tachyon and Bunker also moving up very quickly and hoping to hit them hard so that the adaptive subroutines can't get into a good position because they have so many squishy characters. Um, so I think the gate crashers really want to <laughs> come out of the gates yeah, no. running very, very quickly yeah, and, and hit them hard. 
uh, to make sure that they don't get into a good position there. Yeah, I, I feel like it's, Sorry. it looks like the adaptive subroutines are, are playing a, I mean, they're obviously playing a highly defensive strategy since the Visionary started with T-Card Projection and Citizen Dawn started with Citizen Truth. But the fact that Ra moved back into cover and picked up an momentum. aim is curious to me. Yeah. Unrelenting momentum. Thank you. It'd be interesting to see how that plays out. All right, so it looks like Tachyon's <coughs> considering some movement here. Mm -hmm. um, she has unrelenting mo momentum and push the limits. So whenever she does an action twice, she can do it third time for free. Mm -hmm. And push the limits lets her okay. deal herself a point of damage to take Move an extra action. turn. Right, right. So Absolutely. here she goes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Um. We see her moving up along the, uh, the mountains on the edge of the map, which would be an interesting. We haven't seen that this dodge, new kind of dodge, map before in any of the dodge. tournaments that we've ever had. It's a lot more clustered. Um, there's a lot more All right, so she moved yep. to there and then that, took that, two dodge that. tokens and a third dodge token right. for free. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So, interesting. yeah, I, I'm surprised that she didn't go up to get close to the operative. Yeah. But. Cool. All right, now it is on to turn four. I am going to switch out uh, decor projection for twist the ether. Thank you. All right. And I am going to... Sprint over here. <laughs> All right. And, and take a dodge. Okay, right. and so the operative, or not the operative, the visionary uh, sprinted and took a dodge as well. And the visionary dropped decoy projection in favor for twist, uh, of twist ether. So um, I'm curious as to what the uh, the visionary rolled on her foresight card, what card, we, what die we have hanging out on her foresight card. Because that will come into play at some point here. So hopefully we can get a shot of that. Here. So. Check this one name on search. Oh, there too. I will. I will move. Hmm? Uh, it's dis depends if it's a goal. Spread out. Um, it doesn't say Yeah. One, two, three, four. So you keep that one. Yeah. Actually, here isn't bad. Okay. Go ahead and move with it. So first action move. Mm -hmm. uh, Interesting. Second action expert tactician. Everybody grabs a plus one. Right. It seems like the gate crashers are really trying to stay a little bit further apart and not, not get all clumped up so that they don't have a big KO happen on all of them. Um, maybe try to flank uh, the adaptive subroutine from all different angles uh, to really try to get the drop on them there. Yeah, it'll only depend on whether or not they can actually get out into play. Cool. Yeah. forget he has three Yeah. And yeah, he's one of the weird ones. Yeah. How long did Dawn? Do you have a name on your card? All right, so Bunker moved up yeah. and mm -hmm. gave out some tokens. No, no, it, it wasn't on the card. Yeah, it, it was. Good question. If you leave me the alley, you can just walk up there. All right, so. So we're in the first five minutes of the match here, the first round, I mean, it's gone quickly. Everybody's made their decisions and gotten in the position. But uh, it's interesting, Gate Crashers, which appears at this point to be the more experienced team, has kind of spread out a bit, whereas uh, we see the adaptive subroutines grouping up. Mind you, they are incentivized to clump up because of Citizen Truth. Right, yeah, absolutely. Um, but I'm worried about the fact that if uh, Ra keeps his living pyre going, at the end of his turn... Um, or, I mean, not at the end of his turn, but at the end of Citizen Dawn's turn, if she and Citizen Truth are still in the area of that living pyre, they're going to get attacks made against them by the hazard spaces. Because mm -hmm. right now, Ra is generating hazard spaces. Um, fortunately, Visionary didn't move into those hazard spaces, mm -hmm. but both Truth and Dawn are in them right now. They're still there. Right? Oh, but they're moving out. Okay, oh, so okay. Citizen Dawn's going to move all the way up there, there. to cover. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, so and at this point, now she has line of sight to Citizen Truth, but Citizen Truth does not have line of sight to her, her which is a big, uh, a big thing. And we see the operatives very near. Uh, I'm assuming the operative will want to run up and um, probably make an attack on Citizen Dawn there, and we'll see um, if that's a trap, possibly, that Citizen Dawn's trying to lay for her or not. Is that okay to continue moving to here? Sure. Right. Yeah, yeah, cool. So complete, okay. complete move we'll back. to All here. Yep. All right. All right, so Citizen so Dawn has moved one, up there. Mm -hmm. She no longer has citizen, uh, light to, uh, or she doesn't have aim, si line of sight to Citizen then, Truth, both so because of the cover move, and the elevation. Two, aim, mm -hmm. action three, attack. Right. Oh, so she's aiming and attacking. Oh, interesting. Aim, Fantastic. Yeah, All right. Very good. That's, All right. that's yeah. a good so move. It's always very good to be offensive. Um, it is going to be the Radiant Strike. She's Radiant Striking mm -hmm. the Operative. Excellent, excellent. That is five dice. Autonomous three, five. Autonomous three, five. 
Here we go. So five dice, and it's an aimed attack. So yep. he's just hoping for not threes or fives. Threes and fives are automatic. And there's there one three there, so it goes away. So it's right, four fours. So four Interesting. Fours. Almost yeah, didn't need the fours. need the aim there. Yeah, but <laughs> hey, why not? That's now yeah, it's always a better better to be safe. So than the sorry, operative yeah. is gonna. Oh, she uses her dodge token. Okay. And roll those first. Yep. I know. I've been seeing before. Sometimes I wonder with your dice. And oh, okay, only blocks one of it, so it takes three damage. Three fives. No. No, that's two. Oh, that's 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 a dodge. Use a dodge, dodge, right? No, yeah. So only so one damage. You only take one damage there, which is good. Yeah. yeah. So yes. Yeah, I only block one. Uh, there we go. She, oh, she makes the choice. Damn it. Well, that's what you want. Oh, yeah, the operative, one. when mm -hmm. you're at two hit points, you get plus two attack dice and plus two defense dice. Interesting. So the, the operative at just two hit points is really it's scary. Very, strong. very, very good. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I'm surprised that she used now, the dodge token, but at least it gives her option. You're right. All right, so Truth now is going to probably want to move up into the cover, but we'll see. Truth needs to be within line of sight and range three. Um, and it's, no, it's specifically. Truth's One, ability two, three, three, four, four, works um, within radius three. Okay. So as long as it's within three hexes, not three spaces, not three, spaces, not three moves. Which, yeah. which, mm -hmm. which is a, a really big deal. Once again, we keep on bringing this up again, but this map is really different than from a lot of the maps that we've been seeing in yeah. all of the, uh, the tournaments here. Um, because you do have the big different differences of elevation, which you can't really see on the on the two dimensional board as well. But the, all those dots that have more dots in them, they're okay, different so, elevation. So Truth is actually getting attacked oh, by Ra. Um, so, thank you for so Ra makes oh, so the two's an auto miss, but six six three is coming at Citizen Truth. Now Citizen Truth can auto ignore the six and rolls defense dice and blocks it all. Oh wow! All right. So Very fortunately, good. Citizen Truth is not taking damage from his teammate. <laughs> That's good. Finish the move to there. So a, sec so a second action, I get a dodge, and I'm just going to move the dodge onto this. Okay, and so now Citizen Truth is within radius 3 and does have line of sight to Visionary, but Ra is by himself, and that said, I don't, I don't know the operative can get up to Ra by himself. But the operative now has some options. I'm curious to see what it does with it. Mm -hmm. All right, and Barry, the operative player, is considering what to do. That maybe might switch out a power card. Might not. No. No. Not going to do that. <laughs> they just had to. Oh yeah, I tell you. No, you have. Yeah, you're right. You have exactly what you need. All right, so we've got hidden blade strike, which is creating hazard spaces around. So around the operative, right? Four. Sprint. Yeah, trying to get up to the, to raw. Sure, makes sense. It's the big hitter in the backfield there. All right. So I assume this is move sprint. Uh -huh. And if, it, it frees up, if, um, it frees up the ability for possibly Bunker to put a some big herd yeah, both on Citizen Dawn four, and um, and Citizen yeah, Truth so uh, with any kind of area effect yeah, yep, attacks sorry. without yeah. putting uh, the operative in risk of getting hit by those. Right. Yep. I think it's a wise oh, move. You're here. Oh yeah. Sprint here was. I know, that's, you that's fine. Yeah, I was yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Actually, if I sprint to here, I'll have less range penalties on him. Because we're both at threes. Oh, but, oh, here, I'll go right, here, right, though. Right yeah. here is good. Sprint right, to here? Yeah. Right here is good. Right there? Cause right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. So keeping, right. have there right, some so specific ideas? Yep. All right. and, and the range Number is dice. one, yep. two, then, three, because uh, the change in elevation. So right. threes are higher. And uh, he's, on the Kasarigama, he needs to make at least one of those dice a three or higher. And if he does, it'll do the uh, the pull. Because the Kasarigama, the point, it, it does some damage, but it also does a pull. Yeah. Yeah. And the point of the pull here is the fact yeah. that the yeah. operative yeah. has yeah. her... Um, has her so hidden blade strike, right. and that'll get a free hazard space attack against it. So that's what we're hoping that pulls uh, right adjacent. Okay, and oh, yeah, no problem. So the two two moves away for the auto miss. One doesn't make range, um, um, and the, the pull happens before the range count. So the one probably still won't make range based on where it goes. Yeah, because the difference in elevation there probably. So I still make range. Yes, you make range. So I. Place him yep. behind me. And he's, she's going to pull yeah. all the way to there. Mm -hmm. really upon good. him entering that space, a yeah. has, as upon him entering okay. that space, uh, the hazard's uh, attack so the one goes off. Make range, mm. The one will not make range. The two is an auto miss. Right. So four, five, six is coming so at. Because yeah, yeah. Right yep. you're at a four. Yep. Now do it, yeah. Okay, so the three doesn't make range. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just single four. Single four. <laughs> right? Single four to four. five. Four and a five. Oh, four and a five. Yep. Oh, four and a five. Yep. Four and a five from this attack coming against. Yep. All right, here we go. 
and so blocks one, one of it. One. So right. Rod takes one damage. Yeah. Uh, Not very good. And the hidden blade strike is going up, and it gets lots of extra dice yeah. because since the operator has two hit points, right. he's rolling so two. It's a very strategic move to take that damage right. earlier. Oh, so the ones Ooh. and two. That's the five gets through, and that's it. Because mm -hmm. that. Nope. Even though that they're next to each other on the right. game yeah. board, right. the range isn't made no. uh, with those one roll dice. Yeah, because the elevation. So that's that's a really right. unfortunate. And it takes a one. Oh, very good. So, so Rod does have two points of damage now from that exchange, but. I would say he got out lucky there. I would say so as well, because the operative, especially with the operative in, in beast mode, as she is, <laughs> with, just a, with right. just two hit points, is. Uh, is uh, that could have been a lot worse? Yeah, definitely. And I think um, the adaptive sever teams really. Uh, I think their next goal should be to get the operative knocked out because I don't think they can afford to let her stay in beast mode, as we would say, um, because she's getting a lot of free dice just by having that damage on her, uh, and because she's so low, she will be a, an easier tar target to KO. So um, I'd say well, we hope that they go for her. I think that would be an, a good strategy for them. All right. So now, so now it's Ra's turn. <laughs> Do you have a vote of just two on each or four on one? Two. Uh, Rouse trying to decide what. Three range to bunker and four range to operative. That's true. Um, yeah, the operative is like shockingly far away from you. <laughs> tall buildings are tall. Yeah, tall, that's right. So we also gotta think about Surprisingly, being on top of a skyscraper and being on the ground is actually a large distance yeah. away from each other. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Right. You're if you Oh, if I sprint? Yeah. Oh. Sprint. Okay. Interesting. So I definitely th I think they're um here we go. One oh, there we go. Oh, interesting. They're sprinting back. Oh, yeah. Ah, so they like I want Ra was thinking about oh. sprinting around operative, but operative is still generating hazard mm -hmm. spaces. Four, but then I can't see her. And that would generate, if she sprinted, that would generate two free attacks for the operative. Yep. Um, just walking around her because of those hazard spaces. Um, and even though the, uh, the range is, is quite different because the operative is on top of that building and uh, Ra is on the ground, it would still, I don't think it would be worth it for her to just sprint through those hazard spaces. Honestly, if I were Ra, I would switch out, so Ra's currently got the Staff of Ra and Flame Spike. I would switch out the Staff of Ra for, uh, for Solar Flare and, th and throw everything you have, Flame Spike, Solar Flare, and your Fire Blast base attack against... Uh, uh, against the operative and try mm -hmm. to take her down. Oh, and in fact, holy crap! There we go. Oh, no, no, I didn't actually didn't do that. <laughs> uh, that. They were just pulling that card up because I was talking about it. But yeah, they're, so they're throwing a fire blast, which is the base attack against bunker. So here we go. Rolls the dice and the two goes away. The ones aren't, and you can reroll the auto miss because of the staff of raw becomes a three. That's good. And the ones aren't going to make rain. Yeah, that's too bad. Because the only ones that would make range would be the three and the four. Yes. Right. That's true. Actually, would the three make range? Yes. One, yeah. two, three. Oh, you're, you're, you're taking bunker. Sorry, you're taking bunker now. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, no, it's fine. I'll leave it for now. Okay. All right, so three and a four coming at bunker. Coming at bunker. Interesting. Four defense dice. So. And block them both. Oh, there we go. All right. Yeah. All right. so then, bunker's just uh, really, really beefy. But then Rod does get a free flame spike attack. That's true. Um, because it didn't do any movement or anything like that. Well, the flame spike attack is just a. Oh, there we go. Oh, for free. So, so if the flame spike is an attack that whenever you make an, oh, a different attack, mm -hmm. you get to do that one for free. Definitely, absolutely. Forgot uh, about that. Four, three, three, they all... Well, the threes don't make. Threes range. don't make range to the operative, um, but the four does. Yeah, they're not auto misses. That, that was my right, they're not auto misses. Yeah. Um, so the four attack plus one. Okay, and you can hit this. All right, so a second die, and it's a auto miss. Uh, but the auto miss gets to re-roll because it's a staff oh, of Ra. Auto miss. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's still an auto miss, so it goes away. <laughs> oh, no. oh, that's too bad. That's unlucky. All right, the operative is rolling defense at four, but she rolls five defense down. Yeah, that's, that's very lucky for her. I don't know about lucky. She intentionally took that attack, and she blocked it. Interesting. Yeah. All right, so he's running, he's running back to cover. Yeah, that keeps him... That's, 
keeps mm -hmm. him in line of sight with oh, truth. Okay. Okay, hanging out in the woods. Good okay. place. Very hanging good. Out in the woods. All right. Hopefully, Hopefully, is it Bunker's turn now? No, it's not Bunker's turn, but they're oh, still going to be there on Bunker's right. turn. Bunker's yeah. is going, grenades are looking better yeah, than ever. Yeah, that's right. If you could get a grenade right into the middle of that cover. What'll happen is that truth will choose to take it for some people, mm -hmm. but it's, it'll, it'll almost, if it rolls well, it'll certainly kill off truth mm -hmm. and... Um, at that point, it's up to the dice, but Most they've definitely. certainly set up a position that Bunker just wants to throw grenades at. Most definitely. <laughs> That's a very, it's a very juicy position right there. That you, when you're a Bunker player, you just really you see that kind of position, and you just say, I hope they stay next to each other, and I can get in, into a good position for a really good grenade, grenade launching throw there. That's true. All right. So Tachyon's going after the operative, it looks operative, like. Okay. Now, the op uh, Tachyon hasn't switched out any power cards yet, still mm -hmm. using push the limits and unrelenting momentum. Mm -hmm. So she'll get some free attacks and a free extra turn after this if she goes if that she, route. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Trying to calculate the best route. The routes are weird in this map because of all the elevation changes. Mm -hmm. They're both dealing with running from rooftop to rooftop and going across mountains. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. And because Ta uh, Tachyon doesn't have uh, World Stand Still, she, she doesn't, doesn't have mobility. Have mobility. Right. And so that just makes it a lot more difficult to get up and down this terrain that's um, in the city, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. No power change? I'm thinking. <laughs> still considering, still in the power up phase of his turn. You always choose no powers. That's right? true. That's good. Good. You can just take everything on the board out. <laughs> <laughs> it's always an option. You can hit operative. Actually, I don't think that's a robot. I think you can just remove This is the most tricky no. uh, pathing map. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Line of sight is off. They're commenting on the, the exact same thing yes, that we are. It makes uh, the choices that you have a little bit more difficult with the pathing here. I think this would be a common reoccurring theme all day today. We'll see. Is open everywhere. One's everywhere. One hide everywhere. Just open. So no power change. <laughs> uh, oh, I love it. I love it. So, so it's a time move. Yeah, One, two, three, four, five, six. Hazard. All right. Nope. Does no. not affect friends. Yeah. All right. Um, Operative and turret box. Sprint. So when you move there, you enter the hazard space. Right. Nope. Right. Uh, it does not affect friends. Cool. Good. Yep. Excellent. That was a move and a sprint. So move. Yep. Sprint. Right. Third. Sprint. And attack. Sprint and no attack. Sprint attack. Okay. Mm. Oh, okay, excellent. Going to be yep. defending with sure. truth. Sure. Really, really using the tachyon well there with the free attacks uh, after sprinting. Two's miss. Do you want to change up dice? A die? I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna block. Uh, six. No. no. I'm gonna block the four automatically. Sure. Right. Seems seems appropriate. Um, am I in line of sight of you? No, you cannot see truth because you truth is in yeah. force. He's in court. Yeah, right. Corver. Just everything with him. Oh, there you go. There you go. All right. That's all I needed. I don't know what So you get a free sprint? I forgot that you weren't like the triggers. All right, so Tachyon threw some damage at. The visionary, well, same, same, same deal. Yep. And uh, I will also be defending. Truth sure. is, truth is taking the damage. Yeah, for oh, her. Oh, it's a good attack. Oh, Very good. The one is not going to make the range. Okay, so truth is good. No. No. Oh, that's um, the health. Okay. Oh, that's so. All one, right. Two threes. Mm. All right. Cool. I block one of the threes. Sure. So, what does what truth's defense roll look like that's here? Six, seven, four. Um, blocks it all. Yeah, blocks it all. Wow. Would the one not make range? Because no, no, no. it's this yeah, hex. Yes, the one would not make it. Yeah. I just for future. Yeah. Sure. Truth screws a lot of yeah. things up for me. Yeah. <laughs> we are seeing the uh, the good strategy of adapted sub-teams really coming out there. Um, even though they're picking these kind of squishier characters, they are setting them up, uh, setting themselves up for success uh, with having uh, Citizen Truth be in light of sight of everyone, which yeah. is really really uh, helping them out in this perspective, because that really could have gone a different way if all of those attacks weren't blocked by Citizen Truth, um, and Visionary took those to the face. That's true. Now, Tachyon, uh, I believe, is doing a push the limits turn, so she has mm -hmm. dealt herself a point of damage for that, and she is now p started a start of a new turn, so she's picking a new power card. She's traded out for Lightspeed Barrage, which is another card that does her damage, and uh, when she, uh, that allows her to hit as h hard as her movement is uh, is high. And her movement currently is a five. Yep, so if she wanted to, she could take a point of damage to roll five dice to attack instead of 
That's right. three die S attack. Start of my next turn, first action. Right. right. Spend for light speed barrage. All right. So she's she's taking taking out. And she, she is sprint. using light speed barrage. And she's sprinting and, sprint and attacking attack. for free. Mm -hmm. So she is still defending. focusing is on sure. the visionary, and truth is still rolling defense for that. All right. So the one is not going to make range. Yeah, the one won't make range because three to four. Mm, I should be on. Yeah. So the, yeah, the one way we're going to, so you got three, two fours and two threes, and Citizen Truth is automatically blocking one of the fours mm -hmm. and rolling defense. So three, three, four coming against. Oh, only oh. one is blocked. So two wow. damage gets through. Very good. Yeah. And it's Citizen. Yeah, we're gonna count up. So. So Citizen Truth has, I believe, only a couple hit points left. Mm -hmm. One. Pretty soon that uh, that defense there isn't going to uh, remain. If Citizen Truth gets knocked out, then it allows them to attack the Visionary. We'll see um, if Citizen Dawn can get one of the citizens back up right. um, if she gets knocked out. Yeah. Here we go. One, six, five. One six five, just a normal attack. Yep. Sprint attack. And the one won't make range. is not going to make range. So it's two and five. The two is an auto miss. Mm -hmm. So only five's coming. Okay. Okay. So I will be defending with citizen truth. It's sure. a block of five, and you have two. The one doesn't make range. This was a nimble strike. It was, yeah. it was just regular. Just one. Yeah, one doesn't make range. Two is an auto miss. Six or five gets blocked by truth automatically. So yeah, good to go. That nothing happens as a result of that deck. Two actions. This creates a free sprint. Yep. All right. Attack. All right. One more. Oh, yep. And then this is the third sprint. Here we go. Yep. Uh, so two sprints. Done two sprints. Yeah. Only right. I can take a I take a free sprint at some point if I want. Yeah. No? No. Okay. No. That's, that's how we've been playing. We're just yeah. Gives yeah. sure. <laughs> you just a spare one in, yes. in your pool of possible things you could be doing. Mm, that's cool. Um, let's see, Tachyon is oh, he's kind of up. She's yes. doing a lot of things on her turn, but she has so been dealing herself a lot of damage, which is the yeah, the yeah, risk yeah, that you yeah, do yeah, so when uh, so when you're so using so Tachyon so is three, balancing three, how much damage you deal yourself versus how much damage or potential so output rush, of damage that you can right. deal on the enemy team. Um, cool. right. So we'll see yeah, how that yeah, works out for her, because now she's deep behind enemy lines. All right, here we go. Oh, very nice. Now, we're rolling one of the sixes, but the other six is still as long as it... Okay, so that is... That's five sixes. Wow. All right, here we go. That was a very good aim for... Yeah, that was for Tachyon right there. Very, very good. Now, mind you, Tachyon... Is, Tachyon did herself a bunch of damage to yeah. me that happened, though. Mm -hmm. And doesn't block any of it, so Truth is down, I believe. Truth is down. All right. So, so truth is removed from the game, but that's not an incapacitation. That's mm -hmm. just you remove their defenses, and it's the truth will be gone um, at least for another turn and a half, essentially. Right. Hold on. Stop. Sprint. Sprint. Aim. Free sprint. We're good. Right. Yeah. Yep. On top of All right. Good. So there we go. Rolling moves. Attack out his move to five, and now it is on to the visionary's turn. Now, the Visionary has been dealing with uh, Tachyon running circles around her, but <laughs> she's currently, the Visionary has Tachyon right next to her at f z at one hit point, so, and the operative a couple hexes away at two hit points. So the Visionary is surrounded by targets that are uh, are looking looking a little worse for the wear. Plus, you can't apply... So dodge falls off. Yeah. You, you can't apply foresight to your own attack. So... I'm gonna sprint, and then move really? into yeah. cover here. Because you can still apply twist the ether on that, right? Move right. That but not a horse. And I will roll my head. All right. So. Uh, I, I sprint and move. I believe you can move. You're speedy this turn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm See, the gate mode. crashers are in a really oh, tentative okay. position and because even though they've so taken so down the defenses of the adapted subroutines, they've left themselves very vulnerable, both well, behind, oh, yeah, uh, separate from bunker there, and both very, very low. Tachyon has one, uh, one hit point left, and the operative has two. Um, I know the operative will be hoping that she can hang on to 
stay in beast mode, as we've been saying, yeah. uh, and get those extra dice on her roll. So that was strategic on her part. But yeah. for, fortunately, the fact... Uh, micro missile launchers for combustion on bunker? Yep. Uh, unfortunately, the operative, sure, she has two hit points, but she's rolling five defense right. dice. Definitely. So she can. I've seen her last a long time with mm -hmm. just two hit points. Definitely. I think the most kind of tentative character right now is on the Gatecrashers team is Tachyon, who dealt... Uh, dealt herself so much damage to do all that stuff on her previous like <laughs> two turns or turn and free turn that yeah. she did. You could go three. That's a hazard, and you could shoot him because you have nothing else. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, you can put it up. You could. No, no, that's fine. So you would move, sprint. All right, so gate crashers are figuring out exactly what Bunker is going to do. Bunker really wants to take advantage of the fact that right now Citizen Truth is down. Mm -hmm. So uh, trying to take out... So yeah, Visionary spent her turn moving into the bush to hide. Mm -hmm. But uh, Bunker joins her there. All right, and so there we go. So Bunker is using an attack where he spins a health and gets to roll an attack against all adjacent targets. So that's hitting... Yeah, that's hitting Dawn... And Ra, and the Visionary, their, their entire entire team, their entire is other getting team, getting hit by this. Or well, is getting attacked by it at least. Yeah, yeah, but no no that's suits. right. That's right. So here we go. Uh, right, it is three, four, two, so two, four, three, two, three, four, two, three, four <laughs> against all of those opponents. But it's three fours against Don. Citizen Don. Mm. Oh, and there's an extra plus one die. So it's interesting. And then so the, so there's four sixes. Wow. So, oh, and Visionary is making a reroll at six. Okay, we'll see what happens. Uh, so oh. one. Okay, so it's four ones going against Don, but two, three, four going against, All right, this one's against Don. Visionary. Okay. okay, one at a time. Here we go. All right, so there's now five fours. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, there we go. So six fives <laughs> going against Citizen Don. No, no, no. Oh, no, sorry, two, no, no. Three, so it's two, three, four. It's two, three, four going against Ra and two, three, four going against Visionary, but uh, six fives going against Citizen Dawn. <laughs> All right, and Citizen Dawn is is incapacitated and pushed one. So that is one point to um, to the Gate Crashers using that bunker play. <laughs> There is a lot of math in that role there, but um, yeah. it definitely resulted in a positive, positive result for the gate crashers there. There we go. All right, there you go. Kick her out of the woods. All right, great. Now, uh, who else? Who defends next? We'll go raw. Okay, so raw now is defending against two, three, four. Right. Okay. So you block it. Raw blocks all of it, and now the visionary is going to be blocking against two, three, four, and she rolls. Uh, two, three, four, and takes one damage. Oh, very blocks good. the two, blocks the three, but the four gets through. Mm -hmm. So the visionary's down to three hit points. Raz at three hit points. Citizen Don's incapacitated. So that first round was very like positioning and tight and movement. But here at the end of the second round, Gate Crashers manages to get to uh, get, get their incapacitation. That said, Citizen Don is going to stand back up, and she's got some prime targets here. That's right. The ad and the fact that all of her power cards were removed from play when she was incapacitated means if she wanted to, she could put Citizen Truth back out. Yep, if right. they hadn't right. have incapacitated her, they couldn't have put Citizen Truth back out. She'd have had to switch to a different one. But uh, we'll see what we'll see what she does. Mm -hmm. I'm so good at rolling fours for movement. If I were her and I wanted to play that defense strategy, I would probably put Citizen Truth out and drop Citizen Truth right into the woods because right. you could then see, see Ra and... Mm -hmm. You couldn't see Visionary, but you could see Ra and Citizen Dawn. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see what he's going for. Could do anything. But we could be going a little bit more of the of offensive route. Like At this we, point, we, they we have to. Before. They're down in incapacitation, mm -hmm. and both Operative and Tachyon are looking really weak. She could take a couple steps and go after Tachyon or Operative or and try to get an incapacitation there. We haven't seen so much in this game, but Citizen Dawn really can hit quite hard. Oh, yeah. And they've been playing her very def defensively. But like you said, you know, when you're down one point, you really have to do a lot and really play offensive. Just dropping back and be trying to be a little bit more defensive will just end up... Uh, it a, tends to have the other team yeah, just wear away at you, and, yeah. and it's a game of positioning. They're already... Blood, sweat, and tears. Oh, they're pulling blood, sweat, and tears. Fantastic. Mm. There's some debuff. There's some interesting mm -hmm. options there. Um, so the they're more than halfway through the match, and there's only one incapacitation so far. But uh, we'll see what blood, sweat, and tears can do pretty quick.
Well, yeah. yeah, as we see there on the screen, blood, is, uh, blood, sweat, and tears can do a lot of interesting things. There you go. First action is to move. Sprint. Or sprint. You move. Use mobility. I rolled a four. Section move. So now I'm going to aim. All right, aim a second. Oh, he's going after. Third action uh, is radiant strike. Radiant striking, tacking on, tacking. All right, there so you go. It's going to be an aimed radiant strike. Yeah, so here we go. Level, so it's a very powerful attack coming on tacking. It just has one hit point yeah. left. Yeah. And your, what are your automuses here? My automuses are five and three. So, so let's see. So the, there we go. The three goes away. So that's four sixes coming on wow. tacking. Tacking rolls three defense dice. So tacking is going down on this yeah. swing. It's just a matter of how hard. Yeah. Right now, it's just a matter of seeing how far she gets pushed when she gets incapped. You can ask. So, in fact, you get pushed three. Yep. So Tachyon is down. The team is the the, the score is t tied up, and um, Tachyon's going to get shoved somewhere. Citizen Don decides where that happens. Absolutely. And then Citizen Don's uh, minions, the Blood, Sweat, and Tears trio, then gets their full actions. They get three actions. If I were them, I'd get over to where they could see. Operative and start giving operative right. some minus one tokens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, a really good because, because that'll because that'll get rid of that huge dice advantage she currently right, has. Definitely. And that's something that the adaptive subject teams are really going to have to try to uh, combat next is the operative and her yeah. uh, insane numbers of dice that she can roll. All right. So three actions for Don. Yep. Yeah. So, oh, that's, that's what I was hmm? moving. Oh, yeah, I will do yep. the movement roll. Yep. And then aim is back. Yeah, the aim is now gone. Yep. And uh, can we get a four? <laughs> and we can! There we go. go. <laughs> she, put, she, for whatever reason, really wanted that four. <laughs> All right. So now it's time for Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Now it's Blood, Sweat, and Tears' turn. Yep. All right, so Blood, Sweat, and Tears is going to make some moves. Sprint. You would have line of sight to both of them. I would. One on one. Your turn too. Well, assume you use the right place. Yes. <laughs> they use for a lot of places, but I don't want to say anybody. <laughs> there are more because, places you can sprint to that you don't have line of sight to. That's true. Because then she might not have the defense um, die because Bunker's been generating this for her. And right. you can do it for Bunker, Bunker does I don't have line of sight to Bunker. No, I'm saying you sprint yeah. here. Line of sight through the three to the four. And you're adjacent, so that's line of sight. That is correct. They're currently pointing out how the line of sight works. <laughs> All right, so that's one action is move. Yep. Yep. All right, so you sprint so, to there. Or sprint, I assume. Or sprint. Yeah. Sure. Sprint movement. <laughs> then I will give... All right, so at this point, he's got two actions left because yeah, Blood Sweat Tears have three actions. Just be fair. Oh, they're both giving. So it's going to be a defense uh, okay. so minus. Defense minus one. To each. So, so, so you both bunker big, yeah. and uh, right. the so operative get a defense yeah, minus one token. Uh, yeah. Three. Now that's yeah, yeah one two three. Yeah. So turn six is now over. Cool. Did you did you have a defense? Plus I did. Oh, you did. Yeah. yeah. So you just eliminated that. Right yeah. now. All right. So mm -hmm. Blood Sweat Tears nuked a couple of their defense tokens, which is good. Which is very good. Yeah. But now it's time for the operative. She's getting rid of Kasarigama and picking up Strikes Unending, which lets oh. her use her base attack as unlimited. Um, that's um, she's going to sprint to there, and she's just going to unload on the Visionary. Yep. This could spell spell the end for Visionary. We'll see. Yes. And it auto misses only on two. Let's see if she failed. The Visionary failed to see the vision of her future doom. <laughs> six dice, right? Four, five, six, correct. Yep, so it's a six die attack on the Visionary. That's her second action. Here we go. We can replace the And, oh, there we go. So that, yeah, that's going to that's gonna work. As a one. All right. All right. So six, one six, one five, two fours, two ones, and the visionary is probably. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, visionary yeah, could survive this depending mm -hmm. on the defense dice, uh, and blocks Ooh, a six, blocks very four. good. So it takes three damage. So no, no push. So you take three damage. So you oh. exactly die. Yep. Cool. All right, but go. she doesn't get pushed anywhere. Yeah. So, she, but she's down. So that is, mm -hmm. that is. Not dodge. Oh, yeah, dodge because I have. Yeah, and you also can't aim. So. Fine. Um, yeah, I was I a little surprised that Visionary like didn't go ahead and move a little bit further and hit both nice Ra move. and Visionary you with that attack, mm -hmm. but Came it worked out. There, no worries. You, you mean the, the operative move? From him uh, yeah, I mean the operative. Yeah. I mean the operative didn't move and hit both Ra. Right, and absolutely. No, 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 yeah, I'm sorry. 
because now she's left with just one action left, and I don't, right. don't oh, believe yeah. she's in the range of any. She's not in the range, and she's and when she's in beast mode, when she has two or fewer hit points, she cannot dodge or aim. Mm -hmm. So. But you can't use yourself. So. Yeah. Isn't it three dice? Why is it four? No, it's four. No, it's four. It's four. Alright, and Visionary is making her when I die I make this attack uh, attack. Right, so we got so six and a four. <laughs> six and a four is coming at the operative, I believe. Yeah. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. So six and a four and Blocks all of it. Yep. Oh, there we go. Very Six good. and five, no worries. But once again, we're seeing that, that big five dice roll for the operative is keeping her alive even though she does have two, uh, just, just two hit points remaining. She's been there for almost the entirety of the entire game. I don't want to go next to him. No, you do not have your... You, you can't move up because you're... So we're seeing that the choice to take the damage to the face early on for, for the operative really, really paying oh, yeah. its dividends one to the entire oh, rest of this game. All right. Your only option is, you know, these areas. You go back here to hide. All right, so the operative is going to retreat a little bit for her last action. And that is uh, the operative's turn. So we're now on to Ra's turn. Oh, there we go. All right, Ra. Oh, there's the, there's the go-pass. I mean, I need to line aside for the attack, but that's easy enough to do. Yeah, because you would just push. Yeah. All right. So, with Ra, in, see if he's switching out any powers or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's radius, too. I can, Flame Spike could still apply. It cuts down on my range, but... Okay. Or did you want to uh, infer me? No. Okay. No, 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 not at all. I'm switching out Staff of Ra for Drawn to the Flame. Okay, right. so Staff of Ra. Oh, Drawn to the Flame is great. It's a one shot, so you can only use it the once. Um, and here we go. Okay. And I will push Blood, Sweat, and Tears one. I will push Bunker. Yeah, Drawn to the Flame it gets to push eh. each target. Other than Ra, within radius three, it doesn't need line of sight. It doesn't need anything. It just does all sorts of pushing, and then it makes a radius attack based on Ra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's radius three. Um, you don't need. Line of sight. I need line of sight for the attack, but right. Um, you can show people around or try to find them. All right, so Interesting. Drawn to the Flame will really only apply to Bunker, um, but it's still an attack. Yes. So that's four dice. Okay, so this attack is being made all against Bunker, really. Oh, oh, my oh wow. Well, the six, six comes through. So the six comes through. Those two uh, Bunkers got to roll a six. Five. Out the staff. I you and and there it is. Six, yep. there. That's a really unfortunate roll. Normally, yeah. that five is, you know. But you we get to free Flame Spike attack. Oh, that's that. right. Mm -hmm. And Flame Spiking yeah. operative. Okay, yeah. yeah. No problem. The range to operative is one, two, three. So ones and twos won't hit. One, twos and fives are automatons. So only needing threes, fours, and sixes to make this attack. So I'm fighting five defense dice or four defense dice. <laughs> Bigger health pool. Right. Do you have a vote? At this point, they're deciding which of the two monsters they want to try to hit. <laughs> right. Uh, the five, awesome. uh, uh, none of it goes. Doesn't matter. Right. Wow. That's a very unfortunate roll there for Ra. It's all auto misses um, and dice that don't make range. <laughs> that was a free attack that really didn't get him anything in the long run, which is really, really too bad for Ra, uh, because the adaptive subroutines are really hurting. Uh, All right, the Gatecrashers only need one more kill to win here. Yep, Gatecrashers are up two to one, and it is the start of Tachyon's turn, and she's going to stand up at full health and put down one power card. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of what she wants to do on her turn. If I were her, I'd probably go after Ra, because they, she could potentially, with a push the limits turn, end it on this <laughs> yeah, turn. Yeah, definitely. So I'd love to see... Ta at this point, the game has been a good game so far, um, but we are actually just a few seconds away from the 10 minute mark I'm about to call it and uh, then it will it will kind of be into sudden death mode for them yeah man wow fire blasting operative alright so there's a 5 but 2 6's and a 4 yeah which all make range 6 6 4 all right, six six four coming at the operative. Visionary, you died. Yes. I need your help. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been a nice. That would have been a nice six. And that is the ten minute mark. So there is ten minutes left in the game. One. And it's a ten minute mark right now. Okay. All right. So the operative has one hit point left. Oh wow. And Ra does get to do a flame spike. Yeah. Six. Two doesn't make ranges anyway. So six and a three. Yep. Six and a three. Oh, six and a three. 
One, One, two, two, three. three. Okay. All right. Six and three. Six and three coming at the... Hey! Awesome. Oh. And that is a second incapacitation. And wow, that there is... we go. It's tied up. We have nine minutes and 30 seconds left of the match. And it is Tachyon's turn. Gate Critch coming up. He's been a very good match. Good offense, good defense, back and forth. We'll see what happens. We have 10 minutes. We have Tachyon. Exactly right. Just so... So health Yes. Huh? All right, Tachyon stands up, gains all her health back, and picks one power card. Surprise, yep. surprise. Okay. <laughs> Powers push limits. All right. And Tachyon's picking, picking push the limits for her power, of course, because that way she can... Uh, yep, move. That way she can drop her... Health mm, that's to, yep. hit to get an extra turn. All right. And really, at this point, that uh, the dropping of one health is is really going to be a benefit because we're just looking for that one extra kill. It doesn't matter how much damage Tachyon ha has on her. If she can get that kill, uh, that ends the game. Right. Um, so she's really going to want to try to do that. One, four, six. All right. Six, four, six. four and one coming at Raw. Six three. three. Awesome. Yep. So like one, one. Oh yeah, you're covered. Yeah. Pay for push limits before I continue. Move move with the first action, sprint with the second. Move. move. Right. Sprint attack. Activity. Yeah. Yep. Activity push limits. Last one last action sprint attack. Alright, here we go. Here's the last attack. Yep. Six four five. Four. Six four five mm. coming at uh Ra. That could do it. That could. Ra rolls defense. Three, four, uh, blocks <laughs> one, blocks one of it. Ra has one hit point left. But it doesn't matter at this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm Stop counting down in a weird way. And then you get another turn. So, yep. well, you re -roll so Ra at this point just took two points of damage. Yeah, I was hoping for those three ones. Alright. <laughs> Lightspeed Barrage. <laughs> I right. guess Ra just took one point of damage, looks like. Spend for Lightspeed Barrage. Okay, yeah. There we go. So Ra has two yeah. points mm -hmm. left. Six. How many twos can you roll? And Tachyon has... And so Ra, Tachyon is on her new turn. Tachyon's yeah. on her new turn. Not she has switched out, pushed perfect. the limits for Lightspeed Barrage. Mm -hmm. She is used, She dealt herself a point of damage to Lightspeed Barrage. Uh, no twos. One, three... Four, 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 four. All right, so. So that's one, three, four, 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 six. Four, four. It's at least three points of damage past your defense. Yeah. So. Yeah. Good. good, good. That is the game. Oh, there we Rod go. Got knocked out, and that, that was a fantastic good. match. Yeah. Yeah. Gate Crashers won wow. there in the last wow. few minutes, but both teams played very well. That was fantastic. That was a great match. Good starting match for this tournament. So we'll be back in just a couple of minutes with another round. I'm excited to see how the rest of this tournament goes. It promises to have a lot of interesting. Uh, yeah, I interesting hope every actions. game is as exciting as this game was. <laughs> Absolutely. I actually am looking for even more excitement. Yes. Both of them played a little bit defensive at the mm -hmm. beginning, but once it got into the action, it was very good. And uh, I think that uh, spurred on by that, we can ex expect to see some exciting yeah. things today. So we'll be back in just a couple minutes.